Hello guys and welcome in today's episode where we are going to ask the simple question of should you go with an RTX 3090 and pay less while still getting a very decent GPU or maybe go all out and buy this brand new 4090. Of course more expensive but more better? Speaking of which, you can definitely find these GPUs on my website techfusion.store where my point is to try and bring you PC tech at as close as possible to MSRP prices. So basically the whole idea of today's video is to actually try and compare this RTX 3090 to its bigger brother the RTX 4090 and of course try to determine if spending more is better moving forward in 2023 or better. Or maybe you can get away with it with just spending enough for the RTX 3090 which don't get me wrong it's an absolute great behemoth of a GPU and since for the past uh, well I had it since actually for the past two years and I've been uh, nothing but impressed with its performance and capabilities and uh, well definitely it is a GPU that I can uh, truly recommend moving forward even in 2023 as I think with its 24 gigs of GDDR6X RAM it's definitely more than capable of handling lots of the games that are just releasing uh, the only downside of it, of course, being the fact that it's going to draw more power, not being as efficient as its bigger cousin, the RTX 4090. They're both great GPUs, and of course, how could they not be? The 4090 is right now the pinnacle of GPU technology for the masses, but much better. But don't get me wrong, this RTX 3090 right here is no slouch, and for the past two years since I've had it, I threw it at games and uh, video editing and all sorts of stuff, and I was really, really happy with its performance. It ne never got me down. And I never had any sort of issues with it. It looks absolutely amazing and MSI did an amazing job I think with the uh, well with the Supreme X brand that I have right here. Uh, this is just the Ventus 3X which is not as uh, nice looking as the uh, Supreme X but there are two different lines from the from the MSI brand so that's uh, well that's a bit different there. So in a nutshell I definitely recommend the RTX 3090 by having it and using it daily and of course with this 24 gigs of GDDR6X RAM which is basically the same RAM that goes into the RTX 1400. I think that it has a bright future ahead of it even moving forward for the next few years. In terms of the uh, specs and the internals of the GPUs both feature 24 gigs of GDDR6X RAM which is the exact same RAM that goes into both of these GPUs right here so you're not losing anything on that front uh, and they have a total bandwidth of 384 bits. In other specs that are exactly the same with these GPUs, basically they both feature three display ports and one HDMI out, the display ports being 1.4a and the HDMI being 2.1. Other than this, on the exterior of the GPUs you basically get three 100mm fans for both of them and of course a uh, anodized aluminum backing for both of these GPUs and this is more or less where the similarities between these two GPUs kind of end. Looking at other things with the GPUs, basically the difference has come to the GPU die. So this is the RTX 3090 featuring an 8 nanometer node in there. So it's definitely not going to be as power efficient as the 4090, which is running a 5 nanometer uh, GPU die in there. And of course, efficiency boils down to raw performance. So this GPU right here has a base clock of 1400 megahertz. Well, this RTX 4090 right here can go uh, with a base clock of 2200 megahertz. And that of course is going to translate into better efficiency and better FPS in games, running smoother overall and of course using less power all while doing so. Even though we are boosting about performance and efficiency with the RTX 1490, you have to consider the fact that this is a more powerful GPU and of course the TDP is going to be higher. So the TDP given by the manufacturer is 450 watts with the 1490 and 350 watts for the 3080. 3080, 3090. And 350 watts for the 3090. Another obvious difference uh, moving forward from the uh, 30 series to the 40 series is of course the connector type that they have went with. So Nvidia actually changed from its 3.8 pin array which you have right here with the 3090 moving forward to the 4090 which definitely has right now a connector type which is the well 1 times 16 pin connector right here that most of people started fearing when this came out but it is now no longer an issue so uh, yeah pretty safe to use and be confident while doing so. Right guys, so we could definitely compare spec to spec each of this uh, GPU right here and of course the 1490 is going to come out on top but I'm not quite interested in that because I don't want to have a lot of numbers running through your head and on the screen here and just giving us a whole big headache and a lot of clutter. What I am interested in though is to actually see how these puppies behave in games because these are a lot more relevant with their performance in games than they are in benchmarks. So without further ado, let's throw them in the PC right here and see exactly how how they behave 
with 4K settings running ray tracing on with some AAA titles and see exactly what are the differences between the last generation and the new flagship of today's generation. But much better. So here we have the RTX 1390 and let's try to bring it down to its knees by rendering all in 4K with Nvidia DLSS set to quality and all the textures are set to ultra so basically cranking this game as high as we can possibly crank it. Yes, as you can see on the FPS meter there, we are running anywhere in between 40 to occasionally 75 FPS depending on where you are in the world and that kind of makes sense because depending on how much the uh, well game engine has to render in front of you, of course that FPS counter will kind of vary all over the place. But anyway, even in uh, battle scenes like this upcoming battle scene right here, you will see the FPS kind of drop to around 30 to 35 FPS, but don't get me, those are very smooth FPS so even with all of these settings the game ran smooth and everything was perfectly fine. I mean unless you are a metric freak or running some sort of test like I am here and having a MSI Afterburner opened up in the background there you won't even notice the difference between I don't know 30 to 40 to 45 FPS uh, I don't know I'm just being honest here and in my eyes I don't see any sort of difference I mean this of course can be different for you but definitely this is what the RTX 3090 is capable with this game and it does so using around 400 watts as you can see right there and uh, well using its bandwidth of around 1900 megahertz. There is another thing there as you can see probably the GPU utilization goes to occasionally 90% and not usually as uh, as they go to 99% but this is definitely something that happens with the RTX 1490 as well and I'm not pretty sure if this is something related to my CPU. I have tested out this game with other CPUs and different motherboards and I still had the same issues so this might be a problem with this game's uh, optimization probably. So once again, Hogwarts Legacy, same settings, 1490, let's have a go at it. And as you can see, we're off to the races here and we're looking so much better. First of all, let's take a look at that efficiency. And as you can see in the top right corner there, the GPU is using around 300 watts, giving us around 100 FPS in game. And that is a big difference. This is where that efficiency comes in. The 3090, if you recall, was doing around 405 watts. Uh, for around 45 FPS so this is a very big jump both in performance and efficiency with the 4090 and this of course carries out in other titles not only that but as you can see we're running at uh, 2775 megahertz on the GPU clock that is a big big difference between this and the 3090 and of course that's where most of that FPS is coming out of uh, yeah sitting just around 105 110 FPS for this title using 100 watts less for the GPU that is actually a big thing and although you can see that on the meter don't get me wrong the 3090 was doing quite well and uh, if you wouldn't have been running any sort of uh, metering app like MSI Afterburner right here I would not be able to tell you the difference between 40 to 45 FPS to 80 to 85 FPS especially if you have I don't know some sort of screen that is uh, not a high refresh screen then definitely you would not have been able to notice any sort of difference between them but uh, seeing this in real time with the metrics running definitely hats down this goes to the 1490. Just quickly going over the settings here as you can see we're running the 3090 once again this is 4k running all ray tracing the LSS set on uh, quality uh, with Cyberpunk 2077 of course and everything is looking quite smooth of course we're using around 420 watts so that's a bit more over its TDP but it's definitely doing a good job at 4K with all the settings being uh, cranked to max and as you can see we're sitting just above uh, 50 FPS right here and the game runs absolutely smoothly all while doing so. Right up next we have the RTX 1490 cranking it up with the Cyberpunk 2077 as you can see we are off to a little bit of a better start right here. First of all we're just hovering over 75 FPS with this still very crappy optimized title if you're asking me but uh, yeah some people just can't have enough Cyberpunk 2077 so that's why it's in here but definitely uh, it is running smooth of course as you would expect for the 4090 and it's uh, drawing up around 400 watts which is terribly close to the 3090 but still giving us a little bit of extra performance although in my opinion it's not nearly enough to justify the 4090 over the 3090. Guys thank you so very much for choosing to be so awesome I can't thank you enough and you have made it so far into the video don't forget that we can uh, well actually help each other out 
uh, by just subscribing to this channel right here I'm gonna definitely ask the same thing that everybody kind of asks over and over I hate to do it but it really helps out the channel so if you are thoughtful enough uh, maybe you can uh, just consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more content like this and in the meantime don't forget you can hit us up at the uh, techfusion.store website as well where my goal is to actually try and bring you MSRP prices to all of your uh, PC needs and uh, if you are looking into something that you can't find on that website there you can hit me up at sales at techfusion.store links are going to be down in the video description where you can kind of ask me what you're looking for I'll go over with the supplier and get back to you with a price for whatever you need this is it for me see you guys in the next one cheers